99, proceeded, 3, 2, 1, ignition. Right away, Houston. That's your good. Excellent. The human presence on the moon did not end with Gene Cernan's final footsteps, nor with Jack Schmidt's final words before the Apollo 17 lunar module launched from the lunar surface on December 14, 1972. The remnants of the six Apollo endeavors will, of course, remain on the lunar surface indefinitely as monuments of 20th century space exploration. But for five years after Apollo 17, a human presence on the moon was maintained through a collection of experiments at each landing site called the ALSEP program. When the Apollo Lunar Surface Experiments Package, or ALSEP, program was terminated on September 30, 1977, it brought an end to eight years of continuous data collection on a planetary body, a record that would stand, I believe, until Opportunity rolled past 3,000 souls in 2012. And, much like Opportunity, ALSEP experiments long outlived their nominal one-year lifetimes. The ALSEP program relayed real-time data on seismicity, natural and astronaut-made, solar wind, strength, ion flux, shallow surface heat flow, and more to the distributed manned spaceflight network on Earth. Analog magnetic tapes, 14-track range tapes from the distributed network were collected at the Johnson Space Center, JSC, for further processing and re-recording. Range tapes made between November 1969 and February 1973 were to be permanently archived at Goddard Space Flight Center. Between 1973 and February 1976, a day's worth of data from each site were stored onto separate magnetic tapes on seven-track digital ArcSave tapes, so range tapes could be recycled. Data processing was moved off-site between 1976 and 1977 to the University of Texas, where the use of ArcSave tapes were replaced by nine-track digital tapes or work tapes. And throughout this eight-year period, numerous tapes were made for preliminary reports by PIs, which are PI tapes. Well over 5,000 ArcSave tapes were produced during the years of ALSEP data collection, and today, most of those are missing. The extended mission life of ALSEP operations created some unanticipated issues for PIs. For example, the six passive seismic experiments recorded data 24 hours a day, enough to fill over 1,000 range tapes per year for each site. The ever-growing volume of data tapes were increasingly difficult for PIs to work with, although this was somewhat abated by transferring to higher data density tapes. The sharp decline in post-Apollo funding NASA's budget dropped by a third in the 1970s, meant some PIs could not devote the hours necessary for data processing and maintenance. Although PIs were instructed to archive tapes with the Washington National Record Center, WNRC, the requirements were vague and poorly enforced, and so only an estimated 50% of the PI data were archived. In some cases, this was only a subset of processed, quote, scientifically important data as selected by PI teams. Records show something like 3,270 ArcSave tapes made between April 1973 to February 1976 were sent to WNRC. Records also show a massive withdrawal of analog tapes from the WNRC, prompted by the tape shortage in 1980, which included about 2,800 ArcSave tapes as Goddard Space Flight Center staff searched high and low for reusable or recyclable tapes. Fortunately, the seven-track digital tapes were not their target. The Apollo 11 landing footage tapes were probably not as fortunate. But instead of returning them to WNRC, the ArcSave tapes were stored in the basement of GSFC. Many of these were later destroyed in a 1990 building flood, and the trail of surviving tapes goes cold after they were removed from the basement of GSFC during cleanup. Modern computers could do so much more with LSEP tapes than was previously possible, if only the data were available. The potential was highlighted in the 1990s when the University of Texas 7677 tapes were reprocessed and made available on the National Space Science Data Center. But a concerted effort to find the missing tapes wouldn't get off the ground until 2004, when the presidential mandate for space exploration sparked a resurgence in lunar research in terms of both interest and funds. With practically zero ground truth characterization of the lunar surface, apart from return samples and meteorites, the LSEP program was a natural target for reevaluation. 
suddenly there was a call for these tapes that were nowhere to be found. The NLSI Recovery of Missing Data Focus Group was formally convened in 2007 and is a multi-institutional, mostly volunteer-run effort led by some of the original ALSEP PIs, or primary investigators. It is through the efforts of the ALSEP Focus Group that most of what we know of the tapes has come to light. Every year at the Lunar and Planetary Science Forum in March and Lunar Science Forum in July, the group has a side meeting where they share their successes and frustrations. And there have been successes. In 2010, about 450 ArcSave tapes made between April and June of 1975 were recovered from WNRC. And at some point, a large quantity of ALSEP data was condensed onto microfiche and microfilm and also backed up on paper. For LPSC in 2013, an abstract of the group announced the complete restoration of seven lunar data sets. Another eight data sets were in the final stages and were very shortly to be completed, with the promise of more to come. In short, many raw data tapes have been recovered, and also some processed data tapes, and reprocessed tapes of processed data tapes, and prints of raw and processed data. So now what? Well, hopefully, restoration should hint at something more involved than slapping an ArcSave tape in a reader and ripping it onto a hard drive like a CD. Well, okay, that is part of it, but unsurprisingly, such tape readers in working condition are increasingly rare. And at least some of the ArcSave data recovery was outsourced to data recovery slash conversion companies or citizens. Professor Brian J. O'Brien of the Australian government was an original PI for the early Apollo surface experiments package or EASEP, ESEP, and the ALSEP dust detectors on Apollo 11, 12, 14, and 15, and also the charged particle lunar environment experiment on Apollo 14. He maintained possession of a number of original tapes, including the one pictured here, and is working with a company called Spectrum Data to recover quality data. Unfortunately, O'Brien passed away in 2020. Quality is the other main issue here. Tape quality degrades over time, converting tape formats can introduce transcription errors, and process data might be missing metadata on conversion programs, units, calibrations, uh, random transcription errors, or whatever corrections the PI deemed necessary. Even in raw data tapes, anomalies occasionally occur because, after all, this was transmitted from the moon. Without the relevant metadata, including telemetry to assist transmission quality, the tapes would be worse than useless because any product would rest on flawed foundation. That remains a major obstacle to data restoration. Now, significant progress in terms of tapes acquired and metadata resolved has been via cooperation with PI teams and their universities, with one PI even lending an ALSEP experiment notebook to scan for use in calibrating a data set. Prior to archiving with the planetary data system, data sets undergo peer review, and the ALSEP recovered data related abstracts submitted to LPSC are a promising sign of the science return that can be expected from these important data sets in the years to come. Most recently, in October 2020, in the journal Planetary and Space Science, the team published the availability of previously lost data and metadata from the Apollo Lunar Surface Experiments Package. You can read about the successes the team has had over the years, which include 440 of the previously lost data archival tapes that were recovered. The paper also discusses the data that were extracted, the packages that were processed, and the methodologies used in that data processing, as well as where to go to find the information online, because this should be a publicly accessible data set now.